Hello everyone, this is Colin from Fiber Optics for Sale. In this video, I will explain what is a fiber optic isolator. So let's get started. The picture at the left shows some fiber optic isolator products. So what is a fiber optic isolator? Isolator is an optical component that allows the transmission of light in only one direction. The light is completely blocked in the other direction. Isolators are used to prevent unwanted feedback into lasers, so the laser's operation is not disturbed by the feedback from the fiber optic system. Now let's see how an isolator inside looks like. Here is a structure of a typical polarization-independent isolator. It is made of three parts, an input birefringent wedge, a Faraday rotator, and an output birefringent wedge. The blue color trace shows how light travels in the forward direction. Light traveling in the forward direction is split into two beams by the input birefringent wedge. This two beams polarization is rotated by the Faraday rotator. Then these two beams are combined by the output birefringent wedge. Then light can now be coupled back into the fiber and the continuous is traveling in the system. The red color shows how light travels in the backward direction. Light traveling in the backward direction is also separated into two beams by the output birefringent wedge. Then these two beams polarization is rotated by the Faraday rotator. But when these two beams get to the input birefringent wedge, instead of being combined back into one beam, they are diverged even further apart and cannot be focused back to the fiber. Thus, the backward light is blocked. But if you want to truly understand how this works, you need to understand what is birefringent and what is Faraday rotator. So let's get started with birefringent. Light has polarization. Polarization is the vibration direction of its electric wave. For most materials, light's polarization doesn't matter. All components of the light are bent at the same angle and travel the same path. But there are some crystal materials, such as a calcite crystal, that have different refractive index for two perpendicular polarizations of the light. These crystals are called birefringent crystals. Birefringent crystals have lower refractive index for the ordinary ray, shown as the horizontal polarization O ray, so the light is bent less. They have higher refractive index for the extraordinary, shown as the vertical polarization E beam, and the light is bent more. In this way, those two polarizations are spatially separated at the output side. The birefringent wedge of an isolator uses this behavior to separate the O ray and the E ray. Now let's check what is a Faraday rotator. A Faraday rotator is an optical device that rotates the polarization of light due to the Faraday effect. Faraday effect is based on magneto-optic effect. In this picture, the light has a vertical polarization. After passing through the Faraday rotator, the polarization is rotated to an angle. This rotation angle depends on the magnetic flux density B, the length of the path D, and the material's worded constant V. In fiber optic isolators, this rotation angle is chosen at 45 degree. Faraday rotation is single direction only. If the light at angle beta travels at the backward direction, it will be rotated another B angle in the same direction. So now the angle becomes 2 beta. It will not be rotated back to the vertical direction. This single direction rotation makes fiber optic isolators possible. Now let's get back to the structure of our fiber optic isolator, so we can take a closer look. Let's look at the forward direction first. The input light is separated by the input birefringent wedge into two beams. The O beam has a 90 degree vertical polarization, and the E beam has a 0 degree horizontal polarization. After the Faraday rotator, both beams are rotated at 45 degree angle. So the O beam is at 45 degree and the E-beam is at minus 45 degree. The output birefringent wedge is cut at a different way than the input wedge, so its O-beam is at 45 degree and E-beam at minus 45 degree. 
so it combines its two beams back into one single beam. The light can continue traveling in the forward direction. Now let's look at the backward direction. Light travels backward is separated into 45 degree O beam and the minus 45 degree E beam by the output wedge. Then these two beams are rotated again a 45 degree by the Faraday rotator. Now did you remember that the Faraday rotator rotates light in only one direction? So now the O beam is at 0 degree and the E beam is at minus 90 degree. 0 degree is horizontal and then minus 90 degree is vertical. So here is the tricky part. To the input wedge, now the O beam becomes its E beam since it is at horizontal. And the E beam becomes the input wedge's O beam because it is now vertical. That is why the Faraday rotator is chosen at 45 degree. So now you can see that light follows the same path inside the input wedge. The E beam follows the original E beam direction and the O beam follows the original O beam direction. Only this time, instead of being combined, they are separated further apart. Since these two beams are separated so apart that they cannot get into the input fiber, so they are totally blocked from traveling back. This is how a fiber optic isolator works. Now there you have it. Please leave your comment below if you want to see tutorials covering other topics. Don't forget to visit foforsale.com for more free fiber optic tutorials. I will see you in the next